Harry and Meghan have become a mega couple, one of the most famous double acts in the world. With that fame has come attention, a ruthless press scrutiny that has appeared at times to wear down the couple. It hasn't always been clear the royals were totally comfortable with their allotted role. But perhaps no one expected the extraordinary statement released tonight, a statement that the BBC understands was made without the consultation of other royals, including the Queen. They said, after many months of reflection and internal discussions, we've chosen to make a transition this year in starting to carve out a progressive new role within this institution. They went on to say, we intend to step back as senior members of the royal family and work to become financially independent while continuing to fully support Her Majesty the Queen. We now plan to balance our time between the United Kingdom and North America. In response, a short statement from the palace. We understand their decision to take a different approach, but these are complicated issues that will take time to work through. It was a response that should be read not so much by what it said, but what it didn't say. The language says everything. It says that the Queen didn't know, the Duke, uh, Prince of Wales didn't know, and the Duke of Cambridge didn't know. Harry and Meghan put out their own statement um, through, through their own means. Uh, everybody got it uh, through, through email, and it, so it didn't take long for it to get onto social media. And it seems Buckingham Palace were caught on the hop. Uh, as they have been frequently by what uh, uh, William, uh, what Harry and Meghan have done in the past. Although few expected such a radical course of action, it was clear that the couple were struggling in their role. In an ITV documentary last year, the Duchess of Sussex opened up to the channel's Tom Bradby about the pressures she was under. It's a very real thing to be going through behind the scenes. And the answer is, would it be fair to say not really? OK, it's really been a struggle. Yes. The couple last year also announced they'd begun legal action over media coverage in the tabloid press, Prince Harry stating that he'd seen his mother and now his wife fall victim to the same powerful forces. Many of us already tried to... Perhaps there were signs of this coming. It was remarked upon on the Queen's Christmas message that there was no photo of Harry or Meghan. How this new arrangement is going to work in practice is still very much to be confirmed. What and how they're going to do whatever they say they're going to do uh, remains to be seen. It's a logistical nightmare. It's a question of security. Uh, who provides the security? Is it Scotland Yard? As it does provide royalty protection? Is it the Canadians that are going to be asked to provide it? Who's going to pay for it? Uh, Harry is by no means a poor man, but they're going to live by independent means. What does that mean? what happens and who pays for when he goes on, on tours on behalf of the Queen to the Commonwealth. Who pays for that? It's, it, it is a logistical nightmare. Two years ago, the couple was seen as the modern face of the royal family. Tonight, Meghan and Harry have taken a major step away from that same institution they were once the future of. James Clayton there. Well, joining us now, Roy Anika, the royal correspondent for the Sunday Times. Amna Saleem, the culture writer, joining us from Glasgow. And Peter Hunt, the BBC's former royal correspondent. Welcome to you all, Nika. Did you have any inkling this was coming? Was this known amongst royal correspondents? No, it wasn't known. Um, I think we've all known for a while that the couple have been very unhappy and have been struggling with their, their public role in the royal family. And, I mean, uh, last year, my Sunday Times colleague Tim Shipman and I got wind of the fact that they were looking to move abroad and, and the palace then confirmed that, yes, discussions were underway at the time Africa was being suggested. Um, and then that was discounted for logistical reasons. Now, of course, we know that North America is going to be where they're going to move to. I've heard tonight from very senior royal sources that there is absolute dismay at the palace and that this statement has gone out. In fact, the Queen, the Prince of Wales and the Duke of Cambridge only learned of this decision around a week ago and had started discussions with Harry and Meghan to see how they could start to try and accommodate this progressive new role they're talking about. So they knew that they wanted to put out the statement, but the actual posting of it tonight on Instagram was a complete surprise, was it? They knew that they wanted to find a new role within the royal family. They did not know they were going to put out this statement. And there is utter dismay and disappointment. And, and what I'm hearing, the words I'm hearing from very senior sources is, this is no way to treat the Queen. Do you think that's how um, she will perceive it? I mean, at heart is her grandson and his family. Is she thinking now like a grandmother or is she thinking uh, like the head of a family that's going through one of its 
most turbulent recent times. I think she's thinking like all of these. I mean, as Roya says, this was a very severe rap across the knuckles of a grandson by a grandmother. I mean, she will have been furious, as Roya says. They, they, I cannot think of a pre... I'm always very wary of using the word unprecedented, mm. but I cannot think of a previous example where they've sort of washed their dirty linen in public. Normally, when you get a statement from Royal X, you get a supportive statement from, Roy, uh, from uh, Royal Number Y. This was not what has happened today, and I can't see how their proposal, a sort of third way, is going to work. I think they will have to step down. I mean, the royals struggle with any deviation from the one way, so I think this progressive way that they're talking about is unsustainable. Let me just bring in Amna um, from Glasgow. Roy just used the word unhappiness when she was describing the couple. Um, perhaps that's something we've seen from Meghan uh, in that documentary last year. What is your understanding of, of what's behind this, uh, Amna? Um, I think it's been we've we've received actually a series of warnings with them um, certain statements put out and then that video so this shouldn't be too much of a surprise to anyone but more than that like the royal family is still a family at the end of the day so there's going to be things that we don't know but what to me is clear is that they put the statement out on their Instagram without permission because they're kind of, they're stuck otherwise they have to follow protocols they have to get things signed off um, and that could take years but if they're done and they want to move on they do have to force it and stand up for themselves as messy as that may make things but what megan has been put through by the british media and the public is horrendous why should we expect her to wait all this the the attacks against her have just shown us that being accused of racism is worse than actually being racist. We spend more Tibet time debating that than actually looking at what is happening to her. Prince Andrew, the allegations against him have warranted half the attention against Meghan Markle. International um, publications have even asked, how black will her son be? Those are, quite frankly, no one should have to deal with that just because they're in the royal family. It's it's embarrassing for us as a nation that this is something that we we are still plagued by. Um, so I, I, I mean, I wish them the best. I've never been one to uh, be a fan of the royal family, but I was a bit excited with Meghan Markle because I did think we were moving forward, but all it's shown is that racism is alive and well. Do you think this does reflect badly on, on modern Britain? I mean, this is the, this is the first woman of colour, person of colour, who has entered and been welcomed into the royal family and less than two years later um, sort of turned on her heels and, and fled. I, I mean, well, I think does it, doesn't, it, it, it doesn't look well for the British royal family. I mean, as you say... We're in the 21st century, we're at the start of a new decade, and this woman, the first senior royal... But why royal is it the royal family's problem? I mean, maybe it's not. Maybe it's about, you know, the way we've responded, whether as journalists, as press... Mix. I don't know. Well, in I'm part, a... it's the royal family's problem because they have not managed to accommodate her in the sort of more traditional way that royals are expected to be accommodated. But I think we are only... You know, the, the, issue, the issue with that is I think Peter was right with what he said before. We're only a year and a half in to, to the former Meghan Markle joining the royal family, and actually... I think there has been quite a, an enormous amount of accommodation from the royal family. And I think with this decision that was taken very recently, they were very, very keen to try and do whatever they could to work with the couple to find this new role. Uh, you know, the idea that um, the, the walls have come down in the institution, I think that's, that's wrong. Um, you know, we, we've, been, we've heard a lot of talk about Prince, the Prince of Wales wanting a streamlined mm. future vision of the monarchy. But I understand until very recently and still now that the Prince of Wales is very keen for that to include Harry and Meghan. They talk in this statement about um, fully continuing to support Her Majesty the Queen with this progressive new role. It's very hard to see, as Peter says, how you continue to do that and support her and the institution if you're not going to be working as a senior member of the royal family. I don't think they'll be able to do that. Do you Unfortunately, think... Unfortunately, what's really happening is basically you're saying we're making accommodations for Meghan Markle, whereas she's a successful black woman who was already a humanitarian. The fact that we think that she should just be quiet just for the sake of royal precedent isn't good enough. She's dealing with very real issues. Racism isn't just a small thing to be overcome. It's about who you are. And I just don't see how whatever accommodations have been made justifies what she's been going through. So it's do you not think, enough. Yeah, Amna, do you think that that should have been said out loud more publicly by senior royals and by, by established figures then? I Definitely. I think there's a lot of people that should have taken a lot more responsibility. It's just, I, 
I struggle because I don't understand why people are ignoring it and why people are pretending that it's not happened when we have proof. We have newspaper headlines, we have tweets, we have people posting pictures of monkeys and then claiming that that's their baby. And this is... Well, it's not people. It was one person, I think, who was, was fired sure. pretty quickly afterwards. It was afterwards, one right? person, but social media kind of ran away with it. And social media has not been kind to Meghan Markle whatsoever. There's just been a series of events that have just demeaned her as a black woman. It, it's really interesting hearing Amna just go straight to that point. This wasn't about, um, you know, being American. It wasn't about being an outsider. It wasn't about Harry and his mother or PTSD or mental health issues. It was directly to do with Meghan being a person of colour and nobody standing up for her within No, I think it's a mix of those things, but I definitely think uh, Meghan being a black woman is the thing that exasperated it. She, compared to Kate Middleton, who is very proper and um, a perfect English rose, is a huge contrast. Um, so all of those things were going to happen. The misogyny was going to happen. Presenting her baby just after birth, that was always things that were going to happen. But because she is a black woman, these the spotlight on her was even stronger Peter, and relentless. Peter, do you accept that? I can see that that has been a considerable challenge, but I think the, the point that Royer was making earlier is that if you look at the institution of the royal family, um, they have tried to accommodate her, but obviously, is, as is clear tonight, the accommodation hasn't been enough. Do you think that we will see... I mean, there, there has been some speculation, um, given the rocky last few months, that the Queen herself may want to step back from more frontline duties, make Prince Charles the Prince Consort and start that whole streamlining earlier? I, I actually really don't. And I think the Queen would have, in her strategy plan with the Prince of Wales and Duke of Cambridge over the next few years, have certainly taken Harry and Meghan into account as trying to do more to support the institution. I think this will leave a, a much bigger onus on the Queen to continue frontline duties um, and the Prince of Wales because they're now going to be short of two senior members of the royal family. I don't see the Queen handing over anytime soon. And the other thing it highlights is a, a major problem the institution has had ever since a, a very senior aide, Christopher Guy, was decapitated in a sort of palace coup. Mm. And his whole drive was to get these institutions, the various palaces, working together. We see example after example, like this one tonight, where they're not. I mean, we're all commentators, we're all part of the press. What do you make of um, the Duchess's move to take legal action against two papers? Do you, do you think that was damaging to her or damaging to us, to, to the press? Um, it's, of course, a very personal decision for the Duchess herself. I think what could potentially be very damaging is if that case, which is rumbling on, goes all the way to court. And we see the likes of her father, her estranged father, Thomas Markle, called here as a witness in a case, and you see Markle versus Sussex. I think that could be very damaging. It was an interesting move, given the fact that they're now going to spend a lot more time abroad. They you know, specifically wanted to, to target a, a British newspaper. Um, but I think it goes to the very heart of where they're feeling. They are obviously feeling under attack um, from some elements of the media. But I think we've got to go back to uh, what your other guest said. Social media, you're right, has not been kind to the Duchess of Sussex always. But the British media, I think it was very important we make the distinction, we are not social media. The British media have, have shone a spotlight on a lot of the but good work. But she's taking legal action Sorry, against two tabloid newspapers, not against social media. But the other thing we shouldn't lose sight of, Emily, is that Harry is also taking legal action. And I think that legal action is even more fascinating because that is allegations of, of hacking against two, you know, two of our major news, newspapers, news, news groups. And the, and, and the fact that he isn't doing it for money or for any sort of settlement suggests that he is prepared fully to go to court. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a Anna, matter of principle. Amna, sorry, just to bring you in, do you think there will be any um, self-reflection or self-examination in the tabloid press tonight about this? Or not not no. at all? No. If anything, they're going to make a bigger circus of it, unfortunately. Um, well, certain papers, definitely. When Meghan and um, Harry were first engaged, there was a headline um, that referred to Meghan being straight out of Compton um, and various things like that. And we know exactly what they're alluding to. And this has been non-stop. It has been relentless. So I don't see why they shouldn't, in principle, stand up for themselves. It's as if we're asking people, we're asking a black woman to ignore... The, the very real injury to her person. Do you think that this will stop now if they do move uh, to North America? Will, will the press here leave them alone or will those questions about financial independence and the statement they made tonight follow them? I think 
potentially this decision to step back as senior members of the royal family might give them the opposite of what they want, which is less of a spotlight, less scrutiny. I think now, with this very sort of grey area, do they lose their HRH titles? We don't know yet. I think people will be watching their every move even more than before. You agree, please? Well, and also, fundamentally, I think when you strip it all away, the public expect royals to turn up and open their factory or their school or their hospital. Interestingly, I was travelling on the London Underground early this evening where I bumped into an MP, a senior MP, who challenged that in me and said, no, actually, they've got, the public have got a great deal of sympathy, to, particularly towards Harry after his mother died. I'm assuming... There could be a huge split between what commentators think tonight and what yeah. the public sitting at home are thinking well, about that's, this That's couple. what this MP said to me when I was travelling early, and obviously Harry and Meghan will hope that the MP is right and I'm wrong. Thank you all very much indeed. Thank you.